Welcome back to Biochemistry on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In the previous video, we talked about the function of an enzyme called ATP sulfurylase. I like talking about this enzyme because it creates a molecule called PAPS. And PAPS stands for phosphoadenosine phosphosulfate. And this molecule is extremely important, not only because it's made by that enzyme, but because it gives us the universal sulfate donor. So just like we can use ATP as a phosphate donor, we use PAPS as a sulfate donor. And there's a lot of cool reactions where we might want to transfer a sulfate onto a molecule. So we'll talk about this reaction uh, shown down here in a minute. But notice that we've conjugated it to this sulfate. Okay. Now, this PAPS donates sulfates, and so why might we want to do that? Well, the major reason we want to donate sulfates is to increase the solubility of a particular molecule. So this is something that's generally done to hydrophobic molecules in phase two metabolism in the liver. Remember I talked about the liver as serving sort of like a small molecule immune system. So we have these hydrophobic molecules that are foreign, they're drugs, they could potentially be toxic in high amounts. So the liver will actually do two phases of metabolism. The first phase, which is phase one, is to oxidize them using P450 enzymes. Cytochrome P450 enzymes are normally used, and what they do is they hydroxylate these molecules. And then in phase two, they are conjugated to certain moieties like sulfate. And so notice over here on the left, this molecule has an OH group. That OH group is a prime target to put the sulfate on. Now, this molecule already had an OH group on it, but in some cases for phase one metabolism, you might actually have to add that hydroxyl group in order to sulfate it in phase two metabolism. So that's one area where you might wanna transfer a sulfate. But this one is a little bit different. This is what's called steroid sulfation. Recall that steroids are de derivatives of cholesterol, and they're generally different hormones. We're going to look at two in particular here. One is DHEA. This stands for dehydroepiandrosterone. And the other is another one down here called estrone. Estrone is an estrogen. It's not the common one. The common one is estradiol. But women, in particular, also make estrone. And it turns out that both of these, DHEA, and estrone can be sulfated. So before we get into why that might occur, let's actually talk about the reactions that deal with transferring the sulfate and then subsequent removal if that's necessary. So over here on the left side at the bottom, this is actually DHEA. This is dehydroepiandrosterone. It's a very weak androgen. It's nowhere near as strong of an androgen as testosterone, but it actually can serve as a reservoir of steroids from which we can make testosterone. Notice we can convert DHEA into androstenedione, then androstenedione can be converted to testosterone. So it's just two reactions versus having to do it all the way from scratch with cholesterol. Okay, um, so this is DHEA. We can actually use an enzyme called steroid sulfotransferase. This is the common name of the enzyme. And it's gonna use this PAPS to donate the sulfate onto this OH group. So the OH group is gonna receive a sulfate. And that gets us this molecule over here, which is this one up here, DHEA sulfate, or if you wanna say the full name, dehydroepiandrosterone sulfate. Now, Yes, DHEA is hydrophobic. It's a steroid. Okay? It has all these carbon atoms. And even though it has these oxygens on it, and hydroxyl groups are extremely polar generally, because the vast majority of this molecule is carbon-based, it's an extremely hydrophobic molecule. So attaching the sulfate to it drastically changes its solubility. Okay? DHEA by itself is hydrophobic. It's not going to be soluble in water. However, even though we still have all this carbon over here on the molecule, you'd be surprised how much a sulfate can increase the solubility. And it increases it enough to be soluble in water. Now that can be important for two reasons. One is we're going to talk about later in the video, and that's for storage. But the second reason is you might want to actually get rid of this steroid. And so the way you get rid of it is not through a catabolic pathway, it's through excretion by the kidneys by the urine. And so in order to put it into the urine, it would have to be water soluble. So this sulfate is gonna allow that steroid to be water soluble, and so when the kidneys filter the blood, it ends up in the filtrate, and then eventually the urine, and then it's excreted. So this is one way that the body can get rid of steroids, and it can also do the same thing to cholesterol, okay? It can sulfate cholesterol. 
But in any case, this is a steroid sulfotransferase, and there are multiple isoforms of this enzyme. Okay? They're usually abbreviated SULT and then some numerical designation like 1E1 or 2A1, 2B1, or something like that. There's actually a lot more than this that do other types of molecules. These just happen to have specificity for these types of molecules right here. 1E1 is apparently specific for estrogens, whereas 2A1 and 2B1 are specific for androgens. Okay? But notice we get a sulfated steroid. Now, in some cases, we may want to remove that sulfate. This is not an equilibrium reaction. It only proceeds in one direction. So if we want to convert this DHEA sulfate back to DHEA, let's say we had a shortage of testosterone and we needed to make more testosterone, we'd need more DHEA as a precursor. So we're going to remove the sulfate from DHEA sulfate and get it back to DHEA so that then we can proceed down and convert it to testosterone. This is done by an enzyme called a sulfatase. Okay? Sulfatases are hydrolytic enzymes and they simply use water and they cleave this sulfur-oxygen bond. And so off of it comes sulfate, usually with a proton on it, and then we end up with the original steroid back with its OH group. Now, of course, down here at the bottom, I've shown the interconversion between DHEA and DHEA sulfate. However, the identical reaction will occur for estrone. The only difference is that estrone has a slightly different structure with this A ring being an aromatic ring. Okay, so notice estrone can be converted into estrone sulfate, again through a different steroid sulfotransferase, 1E1, and then it can be converted back to estrone via the steroid sulfatase. Okay, now let's go back to again the reasons why we might want to attach this sulfate on here. I mentioned the excretion, right, because we, if we're going to excrete something through the kidneys, it would have to be water soluble. And it turns out that's actually one mode of excretion of steroids, including cholesterol, elimination in the urine, but it has to have the sulfate on it because that sulfate drastically increases the water solubility. Okay? Without that sulfate, this thing is not water soluble at all. It's lipid soluble, hydrophobic. But that actually plays a role in the other function of these uh, sulfated steroids, and that's storage, or what we call serving as a reservoir. Okay? If we think of a reservoir, that's something where we have an excess of something where we can then use that excess if we're ever in a shortage. So it's basically serving as a rainy day fund. So for example, let's suppose one day we're short on testosterone, let's say. It's a, this is an oversimplification, but it'll do. So if we're short on testosterone, negative feedback says we should make some more testosterone to bring our levels back up to baseline. Well, we're going to have some levels of DHEA sulfate just floating around, right? DHEA sulfate is not hormonally active. This sulfate pretty much prevents it from acting as a hormone, meaning it can't bind to the androgen receptor. Okay? But it's just going to be floating around, and it's just there in case we need it. So that sulfatase is going to remove that sulfate and get us back to DHEA. And then, of course, that DHEA can go through this pathway of two enzymes, and that gets us to testosterone. Okay? And the same thing's true of estrone sulfate. Okay? Uh, estrone sulfate is going to be a storage reservoir of estrogens. First of all, estrone sulfate has no estrogen activity okay? because of that sulfate. It prevents it from acting as a hormone. It just makes it soluble. So estrone sulfate has no, no hormonal activity. Estrone doesn't have as much either. But anyways, we can convert that estrone sulfate back into estrone through the sulfatase, and then that estrone can then be converted to estradiol, the major functional estrogen. Okay? Um, one of the things that's actually been postulated is that the, the ratio of estrone to estrone sulfate is actually implicated in breast cancer because if you have too much estrone, too much estrone is actually correlated with things like breast cancer. And so I guess a very simplistic theory would be that you have too much estrone and too little estrone sulfate. Okay? Uh, but that's just one minor contributing factor, but it's thought to be something. Okay? So in conclusion, sulfotransferases use PAPs to donate sulfates to things that have OHs, like a steroid, DHEA, and convert it to its sulfate derivative, DHEA sulfate. Sulfatases then can remove that sulfate and convert it back to the original steroid. 
And the two major reasons why we might want to sulfate something would be, one, if we're trying to solubilize it for the purpose of excretion, because in order to be excreted by the kidneys, it would have to be water soluble. The second reason would be for a storage reservoir of that hormone. D for example, DHEA sulfate can serve, serve as a rainy day fund, a reservoir, for DHEA when we're short on DHEA or testosterone because that DHEA can be converted to testosterone. And of course, the same things are true for the estrogens. It just goes through a different pathway. Okay. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.